Hey, Katie. Hey, it's Katie. Melanie. I really, really hope that you are really, really fast, 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 and speedy recovery. You fantastic person. Hello, Katie. Get well soon. Hey, Katie. Sending all my love from Canada. Katie, from all of us at Erie, Florida, we wish you the best recovery. And Katie, this is Christian Basil, and we wish you from everyone here at The Legend of the Traveling Tardis a safe and speedy recovery. Love always, always love. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS, took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. Hello, fellow Whovians. Welcome to the le... Hold on a second. Hold on. There we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. Have a fellow Whovians. Thank you for joining us again on this special, special edition of the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Coming back to our show is third actor, third doctor actor from Big Finish, Tim Trelor. How are you doing there, Tim? I'm not so bad, thank you, Christian. Yourself? N not so bad, not so bad. I'm doing great there. Now, there's a reason why Tim came back. I know we already had the interview with Tim, and Katie was kind enough to be here, and unfortunately, she could not be. And we're going to get a little discussion with that, and especially what you just saw in the introduction for those of you who were watching, and for people who were just like, oh. What was that all about? If you haven't been keeping up with, uh, just we're going to let you know what's going on over here. But let me introduce the other panelists. I have uh, uh, Brian Press, <laughs> Dr. Freedom himself from the YouTube channel, Dr. Who News. Dr. Freedom, how are you doing there, Brian? Hanging in there. How's everybody doing tonight? Not bad. Not bad there, Thank sir. <laughs> and uh, we got the lovely artist, Melanie Dean. How are you doing there, Melanie? Doing well. I have no idea what day it is, what month it is, if it was I, three months ago. Two, <laughs> we're, we're, I, we live in this weird timeline right now. We're in the darkest timeline. Oh, Not no. only that, you and I were part of indie events this past weekend. How, how was it for you? How did, how did you enjoy it? We did three panels, each one in each day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then you had a special panel where you did where you did your live artistry. What did, we, what did you do? I was trying to catch up with it, and I couldn't. Something had come up. I decided just to throw things out the window because mm -hmm. uh, every moment is precious now. Um, I've actually had a cake I needed to work on. So I was doing fondant figures. So while I was doing okay. fondant figures, so I'm sculpting, I was also kind of explaining how you could translate in that into like clay or, uh -huh. or Fimo or anything else. So that was kind of like what I just tossed in and just did a, hey, we're going to do uh, sculpting today. Now, normally, watch me. I would do the chats a little bit later, but I need to start off with this chat. This is Meredith Lauren. First of all, we want to thank Meredith. Speaking of indie events, we were at the convention. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us on the live feed, uh, this just took place this past weekend, this past January. The, I'm sorry, J July the, was it, the 11th through the 13th. So, and we had a panel each day. We had a game show on Saturday, which went completely wild. So we, we had a good time, but we just want to express something that Meredith Lauren. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be even doing these live feeds. She's very supportive of the indie artists that we have here, uh, artists such as uh, uh, Brian K. Morris and uh, Rob Anderson, all these folks that are out there, uh, Sarah, Sarah, um, Cindy, everybody who is a very supportive. Meredith, without you, we would not be here, and we would love to. Uh, we'd love to give you all the love and support because without this woman, please join us at um, Geek Insider. <laughs> Um, definitely check out her Facebook page, check out her uh, sign up and subscribe because without Meredith, this would not be happening. We would not be here. And 
thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Thank you so much for an incredible weekend. And I don't know if you got to be there, Meredith, but the last day at the last moment, um, I, they had like a drunken uh, panel <laughs> at the very end of the day. And uh, I was talking to one of my friends, Sarah, Sarah, and I go, how long were you on that panel? And they go like, oh, six hours. <laughs> I'm like, what? It actually ran through the entire night. I was just like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? So Tim is back, but um, Tim, uh, first of all, I want to know how Katie's doing. What what happened to Katie? And for those of you who are just joining us, Katie Manning, uh, she had a, I think she had surgery on her eye, right? That's what took yep. place. She had yep. a little bit of, you, you explain it better because you're closer well, to her. Well, I, she had some sort of bug that she picked up. She picked up. She sent me a long message on WhatsApp audio. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know how far she speaks. I didn't <laughs> three times and still couldn't work out exactly what it was. Um, but it suddenly got into her eye and it basically sort of make it made her temporarily blind in, in one eye. And um, really? she had some she had some work on it. Um, I think she had some antibiotics as well. Um, it's, it's recovering now. Uh, it's slowly getting better. But yeah, I, I, I didn't realize that um, she was laid down. She was low, laid low quite quite a lot actually um it sort of really knocked her out and you know what she's like her energy and um to have her quiet for even five minutes something's gonna be bad but know, she, it... she is seeming she sent a message she said um yeah she said i do you i can do the yeah big love to them to give them big love um from <laughs> the, and she said this cartoon which you know not, you, you, you probably got uh there and um she said oh yes and they love a bit of her auntie iris who is known to be partial to a vat or two. And she said, we should all do a, a shot of tequila here. Yes, yeah, so, and Katie, by some chance you're listening or watching this episode, we're, <laughs> when, once this is all over, we're going to fulfill your wish. We're going to give you the biggest and longest hug we could possibly muster <laughs> once you get back here into the States there. Yeah, well, Tim's trying to, uh, what Tim was mentioning there, and we, we I, I follow Katie on her uh, Twitter. And if you're going to follow somebody on Twitter, it's going to be Katie because she is nothing... Out of the out of the muck that is Twitter right now, which is just a dumpster fire, just I mean, you probably seen it. Katie Manning is like the one source of just calm, relaxed. She's yeah. just playful, and she sincerely loves every fan that comes her way. She even responds back to if you if you get a chance and you talk to her, she might even respond to you if you say you know hi, just hi, Katie. So that, that's just a testament to where Wonder Woman she is. But one of the pictures, she she didn't even go on Twitter for quite some time. It got quiet, and I got worried. I was like, okay, my Twitter feed's not with her, but I'm like, maybe she's doing, she's busy, she's doing something, she's getting ready to do something. And then all of a sudden, her granddaughter comes on on her Twitter feed and mentions that she uh, had this issue with her eye. And when she got back on Twitter, I wish I had the picture and I don't, but it was, she had this eye patch on and had a little butterfly on it. It was so cute. And I wrote back, um, are you be a pirate there, Manning, will you? Now, Tim was kind enough to send me this picture. So if we're, uh, you're getting a little treat for those of you who are watching us on the live feed, um, this would be Katie Manning right now. <laughs> With a little butterfly eye patch, it is just so gorgeous, and that is typical man. That, that that's Iris Wild time in kind of like uh, in, in in just a little uh, different sense, right? Yeah, is that what her character is? Yeah, Iris Wild time. For Iris Wild time. Yeah. Iris Wild time, but it is so cute. And uh, Katie, we just want to wish you a speedy recovery and all our love and hope and prayers for us yeah. there. However, we have not only a special guest, Tim Trelore, but Tim Trelore has another special guest as well. And if you haven't had a chance, you've probably seen it in our feed, and we promoted it a couple of times on the Traveling TARDIS. But, Tim, tell us a little bit about your friend Peter Peter. Well, Peter Peter is um, a very um, strange man, shall we say, that. Um, he's a geography teacher. Um, but he had a, a little crisis um, involving <clears throat> an ex-wife, and a couple of neighbors, and he had a little bit of a breakdown, and um, he has since reinvented himself as a positivity guru. Oh. So now he has uh, developed um, a series of webinars uh -huh. where he is infusing his positivity oh. in the world, uh, and he's very certain in what he's doing. Yeah. There's no doubts about what he's doing and his belief in what he's doing. He also combines it, obviously, with quite a 
quite um, a sort of draconian view towards social distancing and um, and <laughs> coronavirus. Um, no, that's a very uh, interesting term, draconian. <laughs> yeah, he's, quite, he's quite strict. He's, he's sort of he's quite puritanical, really, in, in, in many ways. Now, how did you come across him? How did you find him? And, and what, brings, what brings Peter Peter into the Tim Churlow world? Well, I, I'm now a follower. I've, you know, there's, there's yeah. quite a lot of us now. It's a growing band. It's not a cult in any way. Um, but, you know, he's not really sort of like a Jim Jones or, or David Koresh type mm -hmm. yet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he has a, a forceful nature. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I was intrigued at first when I started watching it. But it's, yeah. it's, it's refreshing in a forceful yeah. way. It's that, certainly that, different. Um, he's, got a, he's got a really interesting view towards positivity and love. You know, one of his one of his, um, his slogans is "One love, two meters," and he believes that two meter rule stays even after the virus is a vaccine being found. So, um, you know, he's he's, 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 he's he's very strident in his right. view. But I think you know maybe he is is we you know with maybe he is the answer. Maybe you know politicians are not doing the job for us, and maybe someone like him, you know, is the way ahead. Um, I certainly think so. I, I'm starting to, you know, become quite a devoted admirer, as quite quite a lot of people are now. It seems. Oh well, I, I just caught his videos too. I actually got the whole series of his uh, what they call it, guru guru modules or whatever they call yeah, them. webinars. I'd say call webinars. That, yeah, that's a good one. In yeah. fact, for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, with Peter, you might have seen his pictures. But there's Peter Peter right there. Love is the drug. And that that's, uh, I guess, every time I see him every so often, he actually addresses that love is the drug there. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'll be asking him about that. And um, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I think someone basically, there was, I, I believe that picture came from when, if you look at some of the end of the video, some of them are shot on the beach. Uh, on the south coast of England where he lives. And a few of them, I think he had liberal sort of view to dress uh, on certain days. And I mm -hmm. think basically someone had said something about sizes and something, and I think that was his <laughs> okay. uh, That's That's my understanding. I mean, I, it was either that or the fish that he saw right. uh, while he was out there on, on the beach. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which, which he did. Well, before we bring Peter Peter on, let me just run through your chats. We're just going to say hello to Graham Kraus. Um, hello to Joe Harrell. Uh, again, with, uh, of course, Meredith Buttbeard. Uh, yeah, if you if you didn't go to the uh, indie event, you, you this is just not going to make sense what Buttbeard is. And I, I don't know if I should explain it on this show there. Uh, Jomo Keel from uh, Stupid O'Clock. Howdy, y'all, in a southern draw. There you go. And Meredith, oh my gosh, hopefully she has a uh, uh, full recovery on her eye. Hugs and blessings to Katie, of course. Yeah, we all wish her the very, very best there. Uh, Mary, uh, Maria Antoinau, uh, we miss our Katie on Twitter, sweetest person on the. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely wonderful woman there. She has a beautiful butterfly eye patch. I was just talking about that too. It was, it was gorgeous there. Well, we got a commercial break. When we return, we're going to be bringing on Peter Peter in just a few moments when we return. So please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the legend. Bateman. What's the Bateman? A novel set in Florida, written by Florida author D.L. Havlin. Suspense, mystery, and murder. Evidence is in the bait. The Bateman is available at local bookstores and online. Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish Santa, if there's one thing I want for Christmas more than anything It's someone to spend Christmas with Someone who really wants me to be there Head to the mountains of East Tennessee With romance author Jenna Hart for a Christmas writer's workshop Since her mother passed after a long illness Jenna has had one wish She doesn't want to spend Christmas alone Meeting Niccolo Maldini, cover model and actor, could make more than Jenna's Christmas wish come true. Unless Ember, Niccolo's ex-girlfriend, does something crazy to stop them from being together. It's a mountain Christmas romance you won't want to miss in Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish. Now on Amazon.com.
Jackie Sonnenberg's My Soul to Keep is a ghost story rooted in the realities of actual cults. When 13-year-old Sky Monroe arrives at her new boarding school, all she can think about is death and connecting with the afterlife. Soon, she discovers her school's spirituality group, the Guardians of Light, and they have a secret. They can speak with the dead, and the organization is a cult. But this isn't Sky's only problem. The campus house where Sky resides is haunted, and even the ghosts have an agenda. They intend on getting the souls they want. Filled with mystery and intrigue plucked straight from the headlines, author Jackie Sonnenberg's research and attention to detail give this ghost story an even more eerie atmosphere. Find My Soul to Keep on Amazon.com today. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. If you're just joining us, we were just speaking to Tim Trelor, uh, who plays the third doctor in the Big Finish audios. But that's not why we're here today. We actually have his friend on. And if you haven't had a chance, you definitely want to check out his YouTube channel. Uh, it is Peter Peter Pot... <laughs> Get it wrong all the time there. Uh, it's, uh, Peter Peter, and he's got uh, a guide to yoga meditation as well as a YouTube channel. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna mess it up over here. I'm gonna introduce our friend Peter Peter. Welcome, Peter. How are you doing there? Namaste. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I got to do this appropriately. Oh, yeah. Namaste. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. I love your glasses there, sir. Well, uh, it's very good, but um, I hope you're not mocking me, young man. I am not mocking. I did, this is. Uh, I, I really I, hope I, so because it's, it's no laughing matter. I've got a stigmatism, and I don't think that's very. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Really I'm have... doing... <laughs> right. Well, you're not really sort of like holding hands over the ocean here. I mean, you look very handsome in there. I, I will say that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, I I got it from the. I just happened to find these. These just happened to be lying around, and I saw your YouTube channel. And uh, I believe you currently not have now have ten episodes uh, in your practice here. So it is Peter Positive. No, I'm sorry, Peter Peter's Positivity let's, let's, Program. Let's start, let's start that again. No. Yes, no, that's fine. I want to make it's sure I get Peter, it right. Peter, it's Peter Peter's Positivity Program. Peter Peter Positivity. Program and I'm Absolutely. gonna I'm even gonna do one better for you, Peter. Right now, as it stands, now watch it later. Don't watch it right now. I've already put in the YouTube link ah. for people to check it out. There, yep, there you go. There we go. There you go for yourself. And um, well, first of all, how uh, uh, Tim told us how you guys met up and how 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 did you get started on this program? I mean, you you were a teacher at one time. And then you decided to start your own seminar of Peter Peter's Positivity Program. Tell well, us a little I, bit how you got involved. Well, I'm still I'm still technically a geography teacher. I'm still drawing a salary okay. from the uh, the local uh, the local council. Uh, however, I am on uh, a bout of sick leave at the moment for various reasons, which I can't go into for legal reasons. Okay. However, I will say that basically, I like Doctor Who. I oh, have okay. regenerated. Myself. Really? Oh. Um, now, I am not in any way as handsome as Mr. Paul McGann. I am not able to wear a bow tie in the same severity as Mr. Matthew Smith. And I will say that uh, I certainly um, don't look as impressive naked as Mr. Tom Baker. Believe me. However, I will say that sometimes I am possibly in possession of two hearts. I find that sometimes my heartbeat is so fast uh -huh. um, that it does feel like I've got two hearts. I mean, particularly, this seems to happen for some reason after about the 12th cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know whether you know the, the Phil Collins song, uh, two, heart, two hearts beating in just one mind. <laughs> you know that song? Yes. Brian's, Dan Brian's dancing, yeah, yeah, that, so he knows it very good. Yeah, I, I've heard of the song, yes. The song worries me slightly because it does sound quite a hideous image, two hearts beating in one mind. It almost sounds, if you will, like a Doctor Who monster. Uh -huh. I would but there we are. But um, we'll, we'll move on with that. But basically, I had a crisis which is highlighted in the series, which we won't go into now, which did lead me to leave my house and go up into the hills just behind my house for a two-day period. Uh-huh. 
fine. And I didn't stay the night uh, out in the hills. Uh, I stayed in my own bed. The reason being that I did accidentally step on what I think now is a squirrel's drain. Hmm. And I was nearly attacked by a squirrel. I don't know what the squirrels are like over in the United States of, of America over there, but I'm telling you, you know, the ones we find on the south coast of England, they will rip your throat quicker than you can say Russell T. Davis. Wait, wait. <laughs> And I don't. What is a that? squiddle? Can you tell us a little bit about it for squirrel. those? For those. Oh, squirrel. 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 Oh, squirrel. I'm sorry. It's a, I'm sorry. A, I, 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 I need the universal you know, those, translator. Those monsters that we have here that that steal corn and other yeah. uh, assorted sundries. Yes. They steal corn. Oh, they'll take anything. They'll take anything. They, they literally grow on trees in Florida. Literally. Yes. I have one remedy for this. Have you seen the film Live and Let Die, the the James Bond film? Yes. Right. Well, do you remember? Do you recall that uh, part where Mr. Bond is having a shave in a hotel, and he's just in the mirror with a lit cigar, as you do when you're having a shave, and a snake is set into the bathroom and comes behind him, and he sees it in the mirror, and just before the snake gets him, he turns around with his deodorant and his cigar, and he basically <laughs> and he got pushed his snake. Now, I now never leave the house and go into nature without uh, a, a can of deodorant, links we have over here, and um, a cigar with a light there. It's just in case. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that. that so anyway, the chills, I, um, well, basically, I read a book on mindfulness, and I realized that I can do this. I have got a gift. So my gift is now something I am passing on to other people. To help, do you do you understand that? Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. So this is this is why I do what I do. Okay, good, good, good. I Christian, mean, there's a there's a question in the chat that I think from Alpha Man, Alistair Wetley. We Alistair a, Wetley. Yeah, we have a lot of people in the chat here, but let me go ahead and jump down over to Alistair. Um, there. Ask him about Emily Salbury. Oh, okay, Salbury. Uh, um, so, that, oh no, that sounds like a sore subject there. So, well, well, let's, do that. let's talk about Emily Salbury then. Um, okay. Right. I wish this hadn't. Uh, this is quite early in the conversation to talk about that bloody woman, but we'll talk about we will. She's a neighbor. She lives across the road from me. She's 96 years of age. She shouldn't be outdoors because she's one of the vulnerable people. That have sent a letter to say, please don't leave your house. You are in danger. But she she insists on walking out and going to Aldi, which is the equivalent to your, you know, like a grocery, grocery store you have in America. Yes, right. we're Aldi. And basically, we have a we had a, an incident, quite a few incidents actually, which culminated in um me doing something I shouldn't have done in front of the mayor and mayoress, uh, and then accused her of something that uh, she apparently didn't do. Let me tell you who Emily Sober is like. She's like the okay. master. She is like the master. Uh huh. She is my nemesis. Do you oh. see? Oh, she okay. Is. Okay. Now we get it. However, she is like a bloody Dalek. She's so old she can't get up the stairs. <laughs> so she can, she can, she can dominate conversations. She can. She can best me in quizzes, but one thing she can't do is get upstairs, and I can. So I've won that. I have won that. And she, she's like a Dalek. And, and I tell you one thing. I don't. If you watch the series now, you'll see that she told me that she killed a man in what? 1944 in occupied France. She was doing stuff undercover as a, as, a, as an agent. Right. For the British forces during the Second World War, so she says. Wait, wait, wait! Right? How do you, how do you know all of this? How, how, watch, where? watch the series, watch oh, the okay. web, and yeah, it will become, become uncovered. Let me tell you now. She yeah. told me she killed a man who had a Panzer. Right now, how do we know that was a German soldier? How do we not know that a French civilian, a young man, stole the Panzer to do some joyriding? was doing a battle reenactment on that very day, dressed as a Nazi, and that she murdered a French civilian. So I have asked the British police to open an investigation into what I think is a murder of an innocent French joyrider. Uh -huh. He did steal a panzer, which is legal, but I don't think he should have been garroted for it. She did strangle him. Um, and I, I think it's a murder case to be answered there. But I will not rest until that woman oh. comes to justice, let me tell you now. Well, maybe, 
Sorry. If if she was in the SO like the SOE, then would that be considered murder if she actually had a if she was, if, if he was a French civilian, he would, she, he would, oh, she, no. she said she's a German, but I think it's a possibility it could have been a French boy who's nicked the tank and wanted to go for a ride. Because let's face it, we've all been in battle reenactments. I'm sure you guys have all dressed up as soldiers at some point or, the, or other. I certainly do. Oh, absolutely. Quite uh, when, but during wartime. Hmm. But I well, 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 why not? Why not? We, huh. we, why not? Indeed. You know, you, you, yeah. Sure, I, I would. I mean, I would have dressed up not during wartime, but my favorite costume, ironically, is a German one. It's the Africa Corps. Do you know the desert, the desert what? German soldiers? I must admit, the forage caps are fantastic. I mean, they were Nazi, you know, but the forage caps are good. And the shorts were rather short, which spoiled it. But I do think the Germans in the desert, I, I would have thought, would have prepared to be naked. They would have preferred nudity. The only problem with that would be well, where would they put photographs of their wife and children? Oh, interesting concept. Gotcha. I never thought of that. Well, let me just jump into the chats a little bit. For those of you just joining us, Peter Peters here, uh, Tim Tr uh, Trelor's friend. Um, we're barbing, talking about uh, Peter Peters Positivity Program that you can no, check no. out on the YouTube channel yourself on YouTube. It, it, and it's free there. We want to welcome uh, Trevor Mc, uh, Mc, McIver, uh, Gina Burris, Miss uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Freedom, Mrs. Freedom, Lady Gallifrey herself down there, Carl Witzman, and uh, also Mark Muncy. He also says... Namaste, Peter. Why, why, why that particular intro? Where, where, why do you use that? I, I mean, don't you know that? That's Halloween yoga. Yeah, I know. I know that. I just I, why that particular word amongst anything that you wanted to well, do. I don't want to say goodbye when at the beginning okay. of the conversation. Gotcha. There. All right. I don't and... want to go. Am I not star? <laughs> okay. That that. that, that I'm that sorry. I'm just right still there. picturing. I'm just still picturing movie tone news running a reel on naked Nazis overrunning North Africa. Exactly. But but as I say, where would they put <laughs> pictures of their wives and children? That's what I want to know. And Alistair continues on. Alistair Watley, thank you for joining us. Ask him if he's ha had any experience with bulls. Well, I'll I'll, um, I'll ask him when he gets back over here. But uh, have you had any experience, Peter, with bulls or no? With bulls. With bulls. Well, bulls or bulls. I whichever you I prefer. Have, I, I have had experiences with them um, with the with it's a new venture I'm actually going into, which is um advertising on cats. So not both. Okay. Basically, I think at the moment with advertising, it's, it's quite hard, isn't it, for people to get into advertising studios to create commercials. That basically mm -hmm. cats, because they get everywhere and they get into people's gardens at night, that we should maybe do uh, electronic adverts on the bodies of cats. And then when you when they go out at night. Then you see them in the garden. You see what people are trying to advertise. So you could do Nike on the uh -huh. on the body of a cat in electric, like a vest that they could wear, like a t-shirt, right? And put it up. So then they go in into people's gardens, and they get they can see the adverts for different companies. Does that make sense to you? Because I, I I think it's a it's a bloody good uh, good idea I've got there. Have you I tested this idea? I haven't yet. I can't catch one. I mean, I'll tell you about a cat if you like, because I'm just okay. about to mention about the cat that got into my uh, bibliosanctum or library, uh, as a lot of people call it. I don't call it a, a library. I call it a bibliosanctum because my bibliosanctum, my library, where I do my uh, my webinars, it is like the TARDIS in a lot of ways because, um, but it's the reverse. It looks huge from the outside. Uh -huh. When you get in, there's not even room to swing a cat. I mean, because I've tried. <laughs> okay. I right. did try once, and there's a reason for it, because a window open doesn't mean an invitation to come into your house, to man or mm -hmm. beast. So I, I am guilty once of swinging a cat, but luckily I'd lined the room with duvets because I wanted a soundproof room, because at that time I was weeping quite a lot. So when I was swing, swinging the cat, it didn't get hurt at all. However, Emily Sauber did call me a barbarian, but I did call her a trash egg. Because she does look like one, so there we are. Gosh. Okay, well, Peter, Peter, uh, we, we got a hard break, but when we return, we're going to dis uh, talk about our discussion uh, with more with Peter, Peter uh, from Peter, Peter's Positivity Program. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the legend. Hi, I'm Claudia Christian with some exciting updates in the Sinclair Method world. Um, first of all, we launched our new coaching page. It's YourSinclairMethod.com, so you can go there and book a session with one of our fabulous coaches. 
You can also reach that page by visiting c3foundation.org. It's at the top of the landing page of the website. The second piece of news is Journeys is out. Woohoo! This book has been a long time in the making and it is available um, in Amazon, Barnes and Noble, your local bookstore, and there's a limited amount of signed copies at c3foundation.org. So get your copy of Journeys now and visit the coaching page for some wonderful support. If you're on the Sinclair Method, you can book a session with a variety of different coaches. Take care and be well. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic starship AI, they They pit pit their their uneasy alliance alliance against against a treacherous treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. Experience Samara's adventure as she imagines the people around her change into friendly cartoon animals right before her eyes. Journey with her in this poetic tale, My Cartoon Imagination at School. And welcome back, everybody, to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. We have special guests of a special guest, Tim Trelor's friend, Peter Peters, Positivity Program. You can check that out on the YouTube channel. It is free. Namaste. 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 There, folks. Welcome back there. And if you have any questions, please go ahead. Fulfill in the chat. You can ask anything for Peter. We want to say hello to Michael McDade and uh, Meredith Lauren. Peter, Peter, please tear into Christian. We love seeing him grovel. That's not what. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Dan. A positivity guru is not going to tear into somebody. I know. He, he, he's he's be, about positivity. It wouldn't be Christian to do it to Christian. Yeah, there you go. Thank there you. There you have still it. Still Okay. And Mark Muncy says, maybe your heart is bigger on the inside. Well, there you go there. And Alistair, um, animal cruelty there. Okay. Um, no, we'll skip oh, that. <laughs> No, I, I, Alistair's, I, I, I know this person. I, this person uh, does live oh, okay. not far from a friend, another friend of mine called Trevor Breasts, who was mentioned in the in the series. Alistair is a as another individual who is happy to take a lift to B and Q to buy some deck in for his garden, but he's mm-hmm. not happy to pay the petrol money. Uh, Three pound thirty one he owes me from oh. the oh yeah um, so. He- you know that's 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 the type of person you're dealing with there. Gotcha. And he's yeah. the person that you don't want you, that that he he's the one that wants you to help move, but he won't get you pizza. And oh, there you, there you gotcha. go. Gotcha. Yeah. I know this character. You know the type of we're talking about, right? I know a lot of those characters. Oh, you give them. Oh, yeah, yeah. tell me about it. I mean, uh, scum, subhuman scum, some of them. But there we are. Uh, Terry McIver has Peter Peter been checked over by the doctor? Sounds like he needs a full physical. Well. <laughs> I, I've been checked over by quite a few uh, doctors, let me tell you that now. Um, and there, some of them have been correct, mm-hmm. some of them are wrong. Gotcha. Now, what, what's the term that you use? Science fiction. There's a term that you use when you introduce yourself, COVID, and I forgot what the term was. Rapidly anti-COVID. Rapidly anti-COVID. Okay, good, good, good. And everything checks out. You're doing okay, right? Especially in this world. Well, I, I haven't got coronavirus to my uh, my particular uh, knowledge. I do cough occasionally in the mornings, but I think that's due to ingesting um, a bit of dust uh, uh, and, and dandruff, probably that's emitted from the the the, the, the atmosphere. Generally, I, I would I would assume. Oh, good, good. Okay, <laughs> Alistair continues. Ask him about health risks of licking batteries. I I, I do remember that, and uh, I got to admit, I. I, I tested out a few of those you, you got to make sure they're not the square ones the little nine volt batteries you got to do it on the round ones because the nine volts the, the, they well, i don't i don't see where what, what, I'm, I'm looking at this going what are the health risks i'm like well what, are there any positives to licking batteries what yeah. why why would well, i look at that there certainly are positives to licking batteries believe me now because at least you are feeling something i mean most yeah. of us feel nothing most of the time that we're on a plateau because mm-hmm. our lives are barren and, and bereft of, of any meaning. And, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. 
I, 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 sorry, I, I, I just had a moment there. I beg your pardon. No, no, but no, yeah, no. Lick the batteries. Lick those batteries. Now, you were telling me that there's a hell stress to licking the square ones. Well, for Christian, apparently. Well, well, well yeah, I, 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 if you, there's a, there's those two ports on the top. If you lick them together, it, so uh, you don't want to lick those particular batteries. You want the round ones. You want the. But you want an intense feeling. A very intense feeling. Yes. Well, I, I quite like intense feelings now and again. Well, this one, I, I don't think you'd want it. I, okay. I, I had the experience. The, the round ones are the safer ones, and the, I think you, you tested round ones on, on your. Uh, on your uh, on your show there on on your show, so I would not go for the square ones. Just to why, be on the safe why, side. Why instantly were you licking the square ones? I, I just happened to have one. You you mentioned batteries, and I just happened to pull one out that was square. That was my bad. I should I should follow by example. Now I remember I recall being young, and that was something my father would do to double check to see if a battery was still had a charge on it. But of course, mm -hmm. it only works with the nine volts, where you kind of touch it real quick to see if it's working. The I don't know many people who would who would go through and just start licking batteries, the little D cells just for for pep. But I can see where if you know, as as Peter Peter said that you know our lives are kind of bereft having that little spark of electricity. Maybe it kind of ignites your imagination yeah. and gets you get you going. You should, you should get your positivity wherever you can. Wherever you can. Okay. I just, I wouldn't do the nine volts just to be on the same. But I'm warning you, if you do the nine volts, you might have a little bit more positivity than you should oh, have out there. Speaking of getting it where we can, I know that you've been doing your webinars online and that they're for free. Um, can, can, you, can you tell me a little bit more? Why are you, why are you so just, the generosity is just overflowing to, to allow this, these people to have, you know, your 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 content for free. We're mm. at a time where I mean, the content generators are not there. So well, tell me more about that. Thank you for that. Uh, that's very kind of you to say that, Melanie. And uh, you're correct. Correct. I am very very generous mm. as a man. Now, um, yes, I, I I they are free, and my webinars. And uh, as I say in the course, that's not where you go to learn to be Spider Man. By the way. So, um, but anyway, back on. Obviously, the joke didn't register as well as I, I'd like to. <laughs> okay. Better ones, but um, it is a free course because I'd like to give something back. Um, I mean, for instance, the environment, the state of the environment at these times is is absolutely awful. I mean, someone rang the course and said I might be something called bipolar. Right now, <laughs> I said, "Well, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I'm not Ursus Mar Maritimus, which is the the Latin for for polar bear. I mean, I can see the uh, why people did get confused because of the uh, the old uh, the heavy artillery. I'm still managing to uh, maintain throughout uh, throughout isolation. Um, but and I will say that obviously polar bears' muscles probably have developed more because they have to swim now further between icebergs. But let's not blame Boris Johnson for that. Now he's only been in office for a few months. Why we shouldn't blame Boris Johnson for global warming, right? Because all right, there's been quite a lot of gaffes, right, during the last few months. Quite a lot of mistakes, quite a lot of big errors. Mm -hmm. But he does run quite a tight outfit up there in down the street, and I do like a man with a tight outfit. Okay. So, well, I mean, he bicycles. He, for, I, I, yeah. I know you from over here. I mean, his his uh, his method of transportation of bicycling is known far and wide. So I can see why, you know, he's a very fit individual. Well, no, he I, he has a bicycle because he's um, he's too tight to uh, to pay petrol money to his uh, driver. Oh, that's oh, oh, like that yeah. gotcha. oh, he, okay. he won't pay that money. He, he, all it is is a few pounds now and again. The man's got the man's got to eat, but he won't do it. So he hires a bike. I mean, it's just gotcha. in, but you know, there we are. It's not for me to now, Peter, to introduce people to your course, is there something like an example or something that you could bring up on our show to entice people to come over and watch your show on the YouTube? And I just put the, uh, uh, just the information down, Peter Peter's Positivity Program on YouTube, subscribe. But uh, introduce people to maybe who might be a little bit skeptical about how you do things Let, uh, and tell them what what is it that they should come and watch your show? What would they could do there? Well, basically... <laughs> A lot of people would say, you can't reinvent the wheel. Right. Yes, you can. Oh. You can reinvent the wheel by not calling a circle a wheel anymore. So instead of calling a circle a wheel, mm -hmm. you can make a square and call that a wheel. Why can't you have a square wheel? Why can't they now build 
Fiat's and Rovers with square wheels. I mean, we set man to the moon. Why can't we have square wheels? I mean, let's let's look at let's look at let's look at this in detail a little bit. Um, I mean, you would obviously need a, a, a high propulsion rocket to be able to launch a, a car with square wheels. But right. think about it. the cars will be traveling slower on the motorways. There'll be less accidents for start. And also, I, I don't want I don't want a wheel of cheese. Why can't I have a square of cheese? I don't want to go line dancing. I want to go oblong dancing. Why, why should we allow them to tell us what to say and what to think? It's about thinking laterally and alternatively and and more the ooh, you, you understand yeah i i i, I kind of get it yeah well basically it's it's something that um will it will change your whole mindset towards uh the, the world and the way we live from now on and i can see brian there is nearly in i can see him seeing that you can make a you can call why can't we call a square a wheel True. I, I've, I've never thought of it in, in that light, but now that you mentioned it... Now that I've mentioned this it... Is, this is great advice. This is why we should be uh, watching Peter Peter uh, on his YouTube channel there. <laughs> and and again, it's down the screen. If you need to do a search, if you can't do the website, uh, if you can't do the, at the... If you need to do the search, Peter Peter's Positivity Program on YouTube. Well, Peter, we're going to be up against a hard break again, but when we return, is Tim, you got Tim coming back, or you want to stay for the final segment? I, 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 it's entirely up to you. I can get. I mean, I sent him out, obviously, from the house, because I'm not staying in his house. Right. Well, so we're still in isolation here. I, I've said you have to leave your house. And tell me, you house. guys are... Uh, more, more than two meters. More than two meters. Yeah, yeah, than more two, than two meters is minimum. I think it should be like 200 yards, personally. That's okay. my personal view. Everyone. Without, without, without fail. So he's outside. So I can get him if you like. It's, it's entirely up to you. The, I think that's within two meters. I don't think we should risk it. Yeah. No. Okay. Because I have more questions for Peter. Peter after the commercial. Right. You okay. got it. Okay. Okay. Right. He can wait. It's, it's, it's a bit cold, but he's got. I think he had a jacket. He'll be fine. Okay. He'll be fine. As long as he's social distancing out there, he's fine. As long. As but I don't care what he's doing outside. As long as he's not in my sanctum. Right. Does he have a mask on by any chance? Uh, he better have done because if he doesn't, I'll drop kick his ass straight into the sea. <laughs> okay. So, <No. laughs> when we That'll return, we're going to we're going to go to the last segment of our uh, show. Uh, we're going to fin finish our discussion with Peter. Peter, and of course, uh, if you have any questions, please bring them up. We'll get to your questions uh, uh, right after the commercial break. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and namaste. Namaste. Now on Amazon.com, I coin from author Jeremy Mosby. It's an alternate reality, and the leader of the planet I coin is none other than Benjamin Franklin. When corrupt officials threaten not only I coin, but the Earth as well, an unlikely chosen one, Jeremy, must face dark foes to save the Earth and I coin alike. Author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe. Get I coin on Amazon.com today. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. Bateman. What's the Bateman? A novel set in Florida. Written by Florida author D.L. Havlin. Suspense. Mystery and murder. Evidence is in the bait. The Bait Man is available at local bookstores and online. Namaste. Namaste. I'm, I'm loving these glasses out here. And welcome, folks. We're hoping you're feeling a little bit more positive on this special episode of the Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. We're here with Tim, Tim Trelore's friend, Peter Peter. Again, check it out on his YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that when Peter puts out a new video, you have a big, big positive moment going on at that moment there. Uh, say, Peter, yeah, go ahead. No, my no, friend. No, no. He's not my friend. Oh. I, he, I know him, but oh. he's not my friend. I, I oh. don't dislike him. But he's not my friend. He's an accomplice. So just, I just want to say that. Oh, Rick, okay. 
I've heard it. I've been, I've been acquaintance. I've been, I've been, okay. Oh, he's an acquaintance. Oh, yeah, acquaintance. He's an yeah. acquaintance. You're quite right there, Dr. Freedom. He's, he's an acquaintance. So, yeah, sorry, I, but I do apologize for interrupting. No, 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 you're, you're fine. No, 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 it makes sense. I mean, you keep your friends close. You keep your closer. <laughs> More than two meters. Absolutely. Exactly. I, Melanie, I think I, I think you're going to be a follower. You know, I, I really believe that you could be, be join us, and I think you may be one of the A students. Well, I mean, I, okay, now I'm almost on board. I'll be honest. I, I'm starting to go through the webinars. I'm starting to kind of go through the program a little bit, but I need to know because I'm over here. I'm I'm over here in, in America. Are you, I like that personal interaction? Do you see post COVID whatever? Are you ever going to come over here stateside? Well. Just it's funny to say that. I mean, I have been invited by quite a considerable amount of people over the last uh, few weeks. And I am considering it. But the last time I went to America was I had a summer camp in Tampa, uh, oh, oh. Florida. Um, and I met a young lady there, uh, one of your fine American ladies. Uh, her name was, um, oh, gosh, uh, Mary Lou. Sorry, I'm Give me a moment. Mate. Absolutely. And uh, anyway, I I I loved that girl. I mean, she she was just wonderful. She was very athletic. But the problem was that one day she said to me, "Can I get you a beverage?" And I looked around, expected Benjamin Franklin or someone at least wearing a a, a trike hat and a and a big long coat and some white stockings because no one has said beverage in England since about 1720. So it was a bit of a shock. And, and ever since then, I learned that there was a, a language barrier that I couldn't get through. I mean, for instance, uh, you say route, we say route. We say Bernard, you say Bernard. We say Basil, you say Basil. We say Courgette, you say Sakuni. We say Aubergine, you say eggplant. We mm -hmm. say potato, you say potato. That's a similarity. But yeah. you say what we say pavement, you say sneakers, we say trainers. You say drugstore, we say chemist. And at the end of the day, I found the language barrier too hard. And it, we, we, it's too raw at the moment for me to come over. It was 35 years ago. It's still too raw. Really? I knew that girl for a week and a half. and It's a long time. In, in, Flor in Florida years, that's, that's a yeah. long time. And it, it's 35 years, I don't think is enough to get over that. Wow particular okay. thing so i hope to come back again i've been to disneyland once but um i was drinking at the time so i don't remember that that oh. yeah you're probably an epcot then that's the that's the drinking it, one exactly exactly but um i'd like to come back but um i would never want to go to tampa and escort it mm. oh okay we well i meant if uh well if you don't mind hanging out with me we will we'll definitely go out to Disney I would World. Love to hang it, but you know we have to do uh intensive yoga three times a day that's uh, Worth yeah. the price you of admission. Sunrise and sunset, or or is it more we, yeah, well, I, well, I think that the students should be doing it at sunset and uh, and, and and five o'clock in the morning. I tend to do it at uh, various hours because I have other activities that I need to uh, obviously accomplish um, during certain hours. Gotcha. Let me go ahead and back into the chats. We've got Meredith Lawrence who says there are positives and negatives of licking batteries, but I'm dumb. Yeah, she was always she's ready to go there with the innuendos on. I think she's seen episode one by the looks of it. <laughs> she probably has. She probably has. <laughs> Carl Witzman, don't listen to the Melanie. Don't lick the batteries. Come on, Carl. Come on. Come you, on have, Carl. you have to oh. try it. You have to. You can't be a disbeliever. Oh. I'm looking for one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Come know on. if a sonic screwdriver will work, but okay yeah. there. And Meredith says, lick Brian K. Morris's book spines instead because th this this is so much better for you. Well, that, that, that that's a little hidden thing going on out there, but we'll, yeah, Brian. I, I, I must admit, you can get some positivity out of smelling the pages of a freshly rendered book. Yes. Um, I, I feel that that, and maybe occasionally eating the edge of a, of a book as you're reading a page, as mm -hmm. I do uh, as a as a younger man, um, the whole of the Narnia Chronicles by uh, C.S. Lewis. I probably picked out the corners of nearly every page of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe um, as almost a dessert. Um, okay. From for bed, yeah, for bedtime. Oh, gotcha. But um, I mean, Carol, Carol would uh, Carol would call that just like typical sort of like westernized uh, decadence. But 
Alistair yeah, says, Peter, you... Peter is a Republican. And they're just like, why are we putting labels on people? That's not cool. That's not good. That, that's disappointing, isn't it? That is um, disappointing. Does he mean Republican in terms of um, Donald Trumpism? Or does he mean Republican as in anti-Queen Elizabethism? He doesn't say. He just says a Republican. I'm Peter, Peter, a Republican. Uh, I, I think that's a shame that people have to lower themselves to labels uh, yeah. in the and age. I think someone like that probably needs... Maybe a little sorting out or a visit from some associates of some people, but I would never sanction that. There you go. Yeah. Meredith says, I had I had such a positively different image in mind when he mentioned tight pants. Yeah, you have to forgive Meredith. I mean, everything is an innuendo there. Um, tr uh, dear Tim Trelor is social distancing and positively abused by Peter Peter. Oh, I don't, he's not abusing him. He's just he's he, outside. He, he probably needs He'd share uh, the lad. Uh, he stays indoors too much, and um, you know, probably fresh air. It's it's only it's only what half past ten to twelve midnight, and there's only a few drunk people around, and the odd town fox that can get him. But oh, and they have squirrels. The squirrels tend to descend into the town at night. I mean, they do cause chaos. I mean, don't leave your cat out. That's for sure. Anyway, no problem. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, go ahead, Peter. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I was talking about. Uh, mention, I've got to mention Carol. She has sent the message to say, make sure you say hello to, uh, to me. So I'm just saying hello, hello, Carol. Yeah, I know you're listening. Absolutely. Tell, tell us more about Carol. Who, who's well, Carol? Yeah, tell us more about Carol. Carol is a, a 50 year old divorcee who lives um, over the road. Um, I was holding her package that was being delivered by a delivery company. We won't go into that, but. Um, we become friends of sorts, but she's a very, very complicated woman. Um, very, very complicated. Do you know the song by Carly Simon? You're so vain. I bet you think this song is about you. That one? Mm -hmm. Well, that yeah. was about apparently the actor Warren Beatty. Well, yes. saying yeah. you're so vain, I bet you think this song is about you. But it is. It is. He's <laughs> yeah. also. I bet you think this song is about you, but it, it is because of the words. So what is she doing? What? Is, how? How much punishment did he need to have? Because uh, that well, that 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 surely blow must have blown his head off, must it? Are you also vain? I bet you think the song is about you. You're saying it's not about you, but it is about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? what she kept that. She kept that a secret for a long time too. I know. Yeah. Until like the or two thousands ish. I mean, we had a flip to a millennia before she actually came out and said, uh, "This is the song. This is who it's about." But I thought she said she's saying that it's not about him. She says the song's not about him. Mm -hmm. You so, think the song is about you? You're so uh, bad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. I know. I get you. I get you. Yeah. I get you. I get Carol's, you like that. Carol's like that. She's that. Oh. She's like. Yeah, yeah. So she's a walking oxymoron. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't call her a moron. I mean. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Oxy, uh, well, I mean, you know, she does like a, she likes a Mars bar, but um, hey, come on, let's yeah. not put labels. And uh, Lady Gallifrey is now following you on Twitter and YouTube. I'm glad she actually put those two words in because I would be worried if Lady Gallifrey were just following you just on the rough. So she's following you on Twitter and YouTube. And just a reminder, Tim and Peter both have their own Twitter accounts. The, you guys have, I mean, we don't, Separate we Twitter. Right. We're not a couple. I know that. I know. I, I didn't mean. I, I I didn't mean to apply that. I just meant no, that. I don't, I, I, it's not, it's she, not she didn't put the specification, so I wanted to make you sure she knew that. that Tim. He's on record now, Christian. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I know. We, I, I got it. Well, I got a rep. I got a reputation to command. I got certain followers who knew. Like John Lennon. John Lennon didn't let it be known that he was married to Cynthia for years. Right. You, you need the fans to think that you're available. I mean, it's just sure. it's standard, it's standard practice. I, I, I can see that. I can see that there. I got no problem. I mean, he's a handsome man. That's I mean, true. You know. Um, Candace, uh, I put uh, Candace Roche. She says she couldn't find it on YouTube. So I, you just can pull up Peter Peter's Positivity Program and type that in. That should definitely pull it up out there. There, um, Meredith Lauren, no worries about copyright strikes with Peter singing. Ha ha. Oh. Okay. Oh, and. Man. Oh, now oh. Gina. Uh, okay, Gina now follows you both on Twitter. So there you go. Oh. Hello, uh, there's Gina. no discrepancies. It's you and and Peter. Um, we're getting uh, close to the end of the show there, Peter. Um, let's just say this. What would be the message? Of, co of course, watch your YouTube, your YouTube shows, watch the episodes, and get more positivity. But what would be the final message that you would like to relate to our audience to let them know? What would be your, your, your mantra, your... Uh, 
keep two meters away mm -hmm. from any other person. The second message would be eat Jaffa cakes sparingly. The third okay. and final message would be one love. I can't think that of any to the heart. No, that goes message than one love. That goes to the heart. I like it. I like it there. Brian, did you have any further questions? I knew you were chomping at a bit a little bit there. Did you have anything you wanted to say to Peter? I just had inspiration. Oh, really? Octagons. <gasps> oh, that was my nice right. Why and can't why can't football be played on an octagon field? Why is it going to be played on a rectangle? Can't play it on an octagon. Why not? Imagine how many end zones. Oh. There you go. Make it more challenging. It's limitless. Wow. Yeah, it's limitless. It's totally limitless. Yeah, I would go for it there. Well, it's Peter, blowing my mind. Peter, Peter, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we're going to bring back Tim Trelor. We're going to have a little bit of an after party if you want to talk uh, more with Tim. Peter, thank you so much. Again, please check out his YouTube channel, Peter Peter's Positivity Programming. Lick those batteries, folks. Reminder, lick those batteries. And speaking of licking the batteries to give us positivity, of course, we're always, as you can see, we're taking our sponsors on. We're taking more of uh, people who want to advertise with us. You can advertise. Uh, just send an email to Sage at Hanging With Show or myself at Hanging With Show, spelled H A N G I N With Show. 35,000 subscribers. Thank you so much on our Facebook page. Can you believe that, Peter? We got a lot of people following us, and we're going to tell people to follow you as well. And hopefully, all of them will get something positive and then from at the end your of the day, sermons. We call it positive lives instead of the negative rubbish that we've been told that we have to put up with. I mean, right, we exactly. need to learn about history. We need to learn about everything. And believe me, I am the man for the future for to help everyone. And I do it with a love, and I do it with a gentleness that you can obviously see is evident. Yes. Totally convincing. Yeah. Folks, for those of you staying for the live feed, we got the after party coming up. Thank you again for joining us. Stay tuned. Please continue to stay logged on, tuned in, and always become part of the legend. Namaste. Namaste. Shall I go get him then? Go get him. I'll Thank go get him. Sir. I've marked the time so you Thank can you. have a, a good end show. There you go. Hey, folks, if you're just wanting to stand by, uh, Tim's going to be coming back over here. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> oh, Candace, great. You found it. Yeah, give him, give, give Peter Peter some love out there. And uh, Meredith, thank you so much. Meredith, we can't thank you enough. I mean, I, I, I had a great time. I love being on. I loved being on standby. Uh, like, uh, oh, can I come you, back in now? Bye. Oh, yeah, come on in, too. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, okay. All right. Yes, okay. All right. I'll give you the money tomorrow. All right. Sorry about that. Hello. <laughs> oh, that's fine. All right. I'm just glad you let him back in the house. I, <laughs> I figured Peter Peter would have just blocked you out. I thought, yeah, I thought he was going to go. No, I'm not going to let you out. <laughs> I had a mask on. You're right. I had a mask on. It was cold out there, but yeah. you know, yeah. I hope he was okay and he didn't sort of, he wasn't inappropriate or, you know. Gotcha. Um, but uh, much love to Peter Peter and Tim Trelaw. Thank you for a wonderful time. Well done, Traveling Tardis. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, uh, Tim, we had a wonderful part. Uh, we had a wonderful convention. It was a little, little ditty convention, but it made some big, 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 uh, got a lot of people's attention, brought a lot of people who are talented here locally in Central Florida, as mm -hmm. well as all over the place. I think, I think Brian, if I'm not mistaken, Brian um, Morris is over in Ohio. In, I was, oh, wait, no. Indiana? I'm in Ohio. Wait a minute. You're... Oh, let me go look. Yeah. No, no, no worries. I, we, yeah, there's some people in Ohio. I know that um, I brought in my friend, um, the Rebel Kate, uh, which we brought on the game show. We had, we had, the, we had um, Blankety Blank in Doctor <laughs> Who style <laughs> on Blankety Saturday. Blank. And uh, it was just a great time. I have all my notes everywhere. That, <laughs> my words scattered around. Yeah, blankety blank, brilliant. Yes. See what happens when you crash for a few hours. Did okay. you see it? Did you see it? What's that? Blankety blank. Did you ever see it? I didn't. No, I, I saw. It. We have the American version, which is the match game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have the American version. They have uh, the one that's the more popular is the Gene Rayburn version, which was a '70s style version when when it was just when it was just open season with the innuendos. 
Okay. I mean, it was just crazy time back then. Then there's the Alec Baldwin version. I, I what we had you had back then was Richard Dawson who went over to do the Family Feud, and you would have all those celebrities, and you they literally had it strategic. Like you had the one person who was not that bright. They would have him in the bottom left hand corner. Oh, right, they would right. have the the comic relief. It was just it, yeah, it was just there. Um, I'm not throwing you out, Tim. I know it's nope. late over where you're at there. So, but if you want to stick around, I'm just waiting to see if anybody else wants to had any further questions for you. Um, we're definitely giving love to Katie. We're definitely okay. giving love to Katie. I hope she gets definitely. well down there. Um, great show, I must leave, but I'll catch you later. Girl. Bye, Carl. Uh, Indiana. Brian is in Indiana. Okay, Brian's in Indiana. So he's yeah. next door to me, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got to give you a little bit of a warning, just for because um, this is on the uh, on the Legend, Legend of the Traveling Tires. We have kids who are watching. There is some adult language and. Possibly some brief nudity if you watch Peter Peter's positivity <laughs> program. So just be aware of that, kids. If yeah. you're watching this on your own, it's not at all ages. It's, it's not at all ages. Honor that from the yeah. show. It's it's not there's not there's not a million um, there's not loads of swearing, but there is there is yeah there's a there's a bit there's quite a bit and there, there, there's it's yeah, not yeah. overdone. It's not sort of every other word, but. Um, it's it's sort of prudently used, but there is one there's one C bomb, I guess. No, it's I uh, well, just want to let you know because the, the, the traveling TARDIS is kind of more of a family show. Um yeah. we have under eight we have preteen kids in there, and we sure. want to make sure that before you go watching the show, would vote for watching Peter's show that um to just keep an eye out on things, just be yeah. aware there. Yeah. Um Meredith Lauren says thanks to Indie Vault, some of indie event shows were hitting uh, 50,000 listeners globally, and the match game was so much fun. Christian, you should do that with Katie and Tim as contestants. Oh, my God. <laughs> we actually, we actually, um, Richard Ashton, who played the Ice Warrior in the Empress of Mars, we he was scheduled to be on, and he was going to be on it, and he unfortunately had some traffic issues. So uh, he didn't get to get in the game, but God, I don't know if, if Katie's on there, and you're on there at the same time. Okay. It, I, he jumped on the Friday night show. Yeah, he was on the Friday night show, but he didn't yeah. make it on the Saturday because he had traffic. But yeah, we we recorded him on the Friday night show, and uh -huh. that was a cute. Yeah, that was a cute little thing too. We were just like, um, because I, I, you know, I liked uh, when we were talking, and Richard was going like, "What are you doing?" I'm just said, "Well, I'm doing this online convention. What are you doing?" Um, nothing right now, and it kind of turned down. into, right. yeah, he was, he was basically like, "What are you doing?" Come on! <laughs> Come here, just chat and promote. What do you so he came on. So okay, there we are. There. So um, so you did, oh, this convention you did was 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 online. It wasn't actually in a in right a convention hall or anything. Or nope. no, no, online. all this is online. Uh, More such... shows are coming on. We're, we're we are uh, privy to a bunch of people who are making their own. They're like, you know what? We don't have a con this weekend. Let's make our own. Okay, who well, wants? Yeah. To Great idea. The um the convent actually the convention this past weekend was supposed to be Tampa Bay Comic Con's so they canceled. Yep. So Meredith didn't want to Tampa. leave people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Meredith didn't want to leave people in a lurch. So she said, I'm gonna create this online uh convention called Indie uh Indie Event. And she literally put it together in one week. And she was wow. just asking people left and right who wants to be on. And there's a lot of talented people that were on there, uh, just tons and tons. Uh, Brian, uh, Carl Witzman, um, uh, Brian, Brian, uh, Rob Anderson, Brian K. Morris, uh, just a lot of people, a lot of indie people who got to, and we we had some very lively discussions and debates there. But it was nice that, that people could come on and just come with us. Um, oh, Derek Hartley, I, hi, guys, I hope you're all well. Yeah, we are. I hope you're out, out there as well, too. Uh, Denise Rochat. Oh, oh no. Well, I better hold off for my hubby to watch. <laughs> uh, Candace, um, he might get to know Peter Peter a little bit better. At least he'll know he'll know what religion he is. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Uh, that was very well hidden. I, I feel. <laughs> I said to the editor, I said, "You've got this footage with my trust now." <laughs> I said, you, you, said, you will not 
I said, I owe you, you know, but yeah. So he's got it. He's got actual proper full nudity of me somewhere. So I might have to kill him at some point. <laughs> I think he was Wait a minute. Did he just right. put that on there with Thatcher, with Thatcher say and just... Oh, no, 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 no. I, okay. just, <laughs> I, like, okay. I took it on um, about five o'clock in the morning down, yeah. down by the beach down there, uh, down my, my house. And uh, and obviously I'm turning around so you can see the lot. So when I sent it to the editor, he had that mm -hmm. footage. He's got that. Yeah. So he's on trust, obviously, that that stays with him until he dies. Yeah, it's basic Christian. It's basically when you start rolling. So you roll camera, then you action. So he's yeah. got that part of rolling action. <laughs> yeah. So he has to make sure the editor goes here. Yeah. So that yeah. exactly. so I can maintain his dignity. <laughs> well, no, the thing was, is it's like when I saw those scenes, I was just like, where were you? How did you do this? How did you get away with it? It was five in the morning. It was five, five in the morning. Five in the morning, yeah. Because yeah. like, me and my girlfriend said we, we'd want to go and see the sunrise over the over the, uh, the channel, the English channel. Yeah. And, um, uh -huh. So that was the excuse. I went, oh, let's get some photos down, you know, because they were talking about doing some nude, like this new age sort of you know, really inappropriate with the glasses on and, you know, this middle-aged man doing this sort of thing. And uh, so, yeah, we thought that's the way where there's no one around. So luckily we got away with it, I think. But, yeah, otherwise it would have been difficult. Maybe somebody was out there. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it would be another time. I would have been, I would have been, you know, I would have, the cops would have uh, certainly. Would have <laughs> I want to thank Lady Gallifrey for bringing this up. I, I, there was another picture that uh, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing the picture. There was another picture I thought just made her look adorable, but there's Katie right there. Ah. Oh, poor Katie. There's the butterfly picture. I still kind of like that one going on now. It's such a cool, <laughs> such a cool patch, isn't it? I know a little butterfly, but she was all yeah. like, she was just. If you see her Twitter feed, she she was just loving it. It was yeah. Great. Um, Derek, this is a shower curtain. <laughs> because I wanted a backdrop and essentially um I got Chrissy got me um the shower curtain as a present. We were actually gonna put it up and then she goes, Why don't you take it to the cons with you? And that's when we started. I think what, what was it? It was um which convention was that? Central Florida Comic Con. Central Florida Comic Con. It made its or debut. Central CFC. Yeah, Central Florida uh, yeah, CFC. That's yeah. CFCC, yeah, Central Florida Comic Con. I it drove back and forth too because it was yeah. just in that range of I could drive there and go back home without having to spend money for a hotel. Who so organized? Who organizes that then? Uh, we had there. There were some. Wasn't that Ben? That was Ben. Um, That's show. Ben, yeah, Ben Penrod. Well, Ben uh, does Awesome Con, or used to do Awesome. He Con. used to do Awesome Con. Oh, awesome Con was bought out by. Was it Reed Pop? I think one of them. I think Reed Pop bought Awesome Con. Then he started doing Central Florida Comic Con, just as a nice, small, tiny little convention, not too far from the area. You could literally either fly in from to Tampa or fly in from Orlando. Really, uh -huh. um, surely, but, smaller, get, but it. But he, he had it. Surely, me, you could you could wangle me and me and Katie to get an invite next year. <laughs> I probably I, because it's. I, a, I, we could toss it over. No, no, we, we want. Well, I let's just say I was working on Katie with something else, and then everything, all this happened. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm just being cheeky. I'm being cheeky. I'm only joking. Anyway, no, but don't. still, no, seriously, though, if you need, I will throw the, your name to anybody and oh, anyone. Okay. Hey, I, I talk to those people. Never I, can. I always do. I've done, I've done the Chicago Tardis, I've done Gallifrey. Uh, yeah, that's it from America. I'm done Baltimore. Yeah, it's it, unfortunately just uh, in the past couple of years, all the Doctor Who conventions kind of died out. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Con Casterberis. Well, uh, well, hang on, hang on. Yeah, it I know, kind of, it's in October. It, but it's in October. Oh, it was yeah. moved to October. Yeah, Con Casterberis has been moved to October. Oh, and uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, but yeah, I'll, I'll be more than happy to put in a word. I mean, anybody comes on the show, I usually just look out for it and say, Christian, they usually say afterwards, hey, Christian, do you know anybody? I'm just like, if I can get you, I swear I'll get you here. So, uh, you know, it, it really just depends on the convention heads. Now, most of them are kind of um, going for new who than classic who, but Conquest yeah. Herbris would be one that I would, uh, I would be very happy I think to pull you guys in that would that would be nice. Yeah, um, if time, if time Lord Fest was still going. That would have been a good one. And that's the one yeah, that I was. Yeah, we. Oh, uh, 
unfortunately at the beginning of this year we had a a, a very important person in the universe in florida pass away and he oh, ran okay. a convention called time lord fest they had it in jacksonville orlando and tampa and unfortunately he had a car accident and he succumbed to his injuries oh. at the beginning of january and yeah for for a while he was the he was, the, was, doctor who was convention. the doctor who convention in florida it florida. was yeah, especially Tampa. Uh, then he moved it to Jack. He added one to Jacksonville, and it yeah. was starting to bring people. Our yeah, if you, want, if you want to blame my kind of startup in in podcasting and panels and conventions, it's all him. He he actually started it in Orlando, and it was in a hookah bar, and he had like oh. a pitch up tent and stuff like that. And he said it was outdoors. Um, I remember he got yeah because so and, many people showed up. We're like, what? Uh, right, they had to put up tents. The vendors, th there was a hookah bar where the panel was taking place, which is really weird because you're watching there and everybody's going, <laughs> watching oh, you wow. perform. And the tents were outside with the vendors. However, wow, um, he, he called me up and goes, um, I want you to do one of the panels. And I said, I'll be more than happy to. And I had never done a panel before or anything. And I, he just hear, heard me talk and say stuff and goes, I think you are, I, I think you're appropriate for one of the panels out there, meaning that he wanted me to do um, something for him during the show. And he goes, I got this one panel for you. And the weirdest part about the panel was called Vampires and Doctor Who. Okay. There haven't been any except for one episode. No. <laughs> and this was after um, Vampires of Venice. Which weren't vampires; they were they were blood sucking monster fish. So I I literally had to unearth all my state of decay knowledge back up, and I go I don't know if any time it's been a, and I, I was with um, quite a few people who knew what they were talking about, and I felt a little bit out of place. And after the panel, I I kind of said, well, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. And he goes, I we all thought you knew what you were talking about. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> It's all yeah. about it's all about bluffing. Exactly. Is it, well, it, it's gotten better and it's gotten more comfortable over time itself. I, I you know, but it's it the, the starter one was yeah the first one I kind of just like I, I took an hour and I kind of ate it up for all it's worth and, and kind of bluffed it and I said well I really was bluffing and he goes yeah so were we <laughs> I'm like okay then I'm not alone in this. <laughs> it's so, great when you learn that everyone else is bluffing. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes, how'd you get through? I don't know. No, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I just kept talking. <laughs> anyway, exactly. That's that's essentially it. And then just panels got easier after that. It was just a lot easier to talk to people and, and, yeah. and people will, will bring up the topics for you. You just yeah. you, it started becoming um things to be interactive. I I, yeah. I said I stop I want to stop talking and listen to everybody else. So that's how I handle panels when I do stuff here is to make the audience more interactive because that's what they remember about the convention, what, what they were part of instead of just watching it. Mm. So that's how I just handle things. But yeah, I would love for you guys to come down here. I just, oh, we, love we, just gotta, we just got to find you a home and uh, it's kind of limited. That's that's it, Christian. We're starting our convention. Is it? Don't even <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. As much as I begrudge uh, 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 Ken Spivey about things, I would never trade in because I saw him pulling his hair out. I mean, oh yeah, was, they're they're absolutely cluster. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he was he walked around the convention with a fine tooth comb. I mean, if it, if if so much of speck of dust was out of place, he was in there to pull it right out. That's called event insurance. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> He just, yeah, he was just walking around. He was on the panel. He goes, "You guys okay? You guys okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, we're fine." And just, okay, that's all I need to know. Walks away. <laughs> so that was just the way he handled things. It was just, just really, really there. Um, you have a pic of Katie and I have patched some privately, Brian and Christian. Oh yeah. All right. Oh wait, 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 wait. That's old. That's old. No, no, no. This is new. Hang on. Oh. And this is actually more for Brian. I don't know if he got it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Look at me. Did I download it? Yeah, here we go. It's coming up. I don't know how many how many people are still watching right now. Uh, oh, it just dropped to six. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, man, like uh, just seeing you better on the road to recovery is enough to brighten my whole weekend. Big hugs and kisses, Katie. Respond back to Doctor Freedom. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Smiling hugs. Oh, there you go. 
Ah, it's nice. Isn't it? That's you. Yeah, I, I saw that one video she did, and it was just so great to all see her back on. You know, after being gone for a yeah. while. She's so wonderful. Just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. She. Well, how's she right now? Now is she is she still recovering, or is she just? Is yeah, she yeah. Dude, I mean, I well, she left me. Uh, I say she left me a message earlier. Uh, I, I said, well, I'll say it because I think she was. Yeah, she, well, the fact that she's she did that cartoon and then she did look, she's done a picture of her. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> hang on. It says, oh, it's a couple of swear words in there. <laughs> <laughs> from you or from her? <laughs> uh, but it's usually both, it's usually her. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, she says like yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. I think I, it's not really clear here, but I think she's she sounded a lot brighter when she sent a message the other day. So okay, good. Um, yeah, I think she's 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 on she's on the right yeah on the right path. You know, I would pay an, an exuberant amount of money if she sent me a, an, an audio with her dropping the f bomb somewhere along the way. I just like I need that. <laughs> and yeah, I will play that over and over and over and over. It's not, uh, no, it's, it's an S. It's an S. It's an S? An S. An S bomb. An S bomb there. An S bomb, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, for our fans who we still got quite a few fans still hanging on there. So Actually, the then, number goes up and down, up and down, up and down. What's that? People watching and whatnot. Tim, I have a question for you. Yes. How would how did you decide on uh, Peter Peter's costume? Like, how do you how did you decide I'm going to have the 70s vibe? Did you go thrift storing or second charity shopping to to look for it or did well, you have it? Say that because um I, I always saw this I had this character in mind for something else this sort of sitcom I was writing and I had him as this guy it's sort of more I say it's early 80s mm -hmm. then okay 70s, I, think. I always saw like something about the short sleeve white shirt is because you probably didn't see it yes he's a short sleeve it's always that sort of fishes thing you know men with a bunch of keys on their um on their their belt and yep. so, you know, John Goodman in, um, we were talking about in Big Lebowski, mm -hmm. that type of character who's like a security guard or um, something officious where he's in charge of people somehow. Mm -hmm. Not a policeman, but it's something, it's something in, who's got authority. And I just had that. And then I found the jacket somewhere in Italy, actually. I bought it in Italy. Really? Because uh, oh, I like right. jackets. I can actually wear that for real with a pair of jeans because I like three button jackets. It's like part of the mod fashion thing. Um, and then it it just went, and I bought this cheap tie for about two quid in Tesco. It just <laughs> right, and obviously because it all it's all built around the glasses that that you know Christian's got on like that. It's all built around the glasses and having a beard and the side parting. So um, it's it's that sort of like a teacher sort of thing, you know, that you probably remember when you were younger. That sort of quite strict. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just checking your link, and uh, you got a few more subscribers. There you go. Uh, there we go. Got a few more subscribers. This is this is actually fun because when I saw Peter Peter wearing his glasses, these are my dad's. Wow. These are originally my dad's. So when I saw him come, I was like, yeah, my dad had those. <laughs> so I had to wear them for the show there. Yeah. I mean, it's, no? it's, it's going quite well. I mean, because this is all a new venture, you know, doing it. You never would have done this without coronavirus <laughs> being locked down. Why um, not? It's well, do you know what I mean? These things that suddenly you find things that you never do. I mean, my, my girlfriend's written a play that's being done, filmed with Miriam Margley. I don't know if you know who she is. Uh, she's quite big. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. A, uh, Australian British actress. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's shorter, that's right. more heavy set, funny as hell, but yeah, raunchy that's as hell. Yeah. That's it. Yes, so I she's doing that with that. And I, I've done something else. We've done the play called Bird Song. We've done that online, which has been seen as the best play in lockdown over here. So. There's all this stuff because I think it doesn't matter if you don't do anything, haven't done anything during this time. But I guess phew, some people you just want to do stuff and do, yeah. do new stuff. You know, I, I'm, I haven't learned a language or anything, or learned to play the guitar or anything like that. You know, I, I'd, I'd be too lazy to do that. But you know, if you're still on, um, folks, uh, you're watching the, the the after party. I just want to make uh, please go ahead right now and just subscribe to. Uh, Peter Peter's YouTube channel. It is so awesome. I, when I first saw it, I go like, uh, I think, but what was my first comment? I think I said, is your, is Peter stuck in the eighties? <laughs> Cause I, I heard the music. It was like, Oh my God, that is yeah, the music so, is, so yeah. 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause we thought about the, the graphics going to be that sort of, um, 
80s sort of, I can't remember what the name of it is now. Damn, that 80s graphics where, you know, your eyes would come out your head. Sort of yes. Yeah. Things. We were going to do it like that. You know, and the tongue being really long and wobbly and cartoony. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, that's the, yeah, that's the love is the drug and that 80s colours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just thought 80s seemed bright, you know, and sort of like backward, this bloke who's, who's the last person to be giving up. <laughs> advice mm -hmm. to anyone you know and he's just having a breakdown he's having a breakdown and he's thinking this is my way out of it i didn't know i didn't know how to explain it and i said um i think after the third episode i wrote you back and to go is he going karen <laughs> is he going completely nuts i was, well, say, was, I was saying that, to you, that's, that that's was cool. my favorite shirt that you've worn oh uh, yes sir. that was my dad's that's a ben sherman shirt you know that, I, okay I, I'll spare My, you. Well, sure. I'll never saw that. Here you go. Oh, nope, nope. Hold on, because this is gonna get bad. Because I brought, because uh, I love those shirts. <sighs> that scares me. I think I used to. Oh, have wow. shirt like that. <laughs> These are my dad's shirts that I kept because oh. I love them so much. That's why I was like, oh. wait a minute. I gotta know where he got these damn shirts. Look at the colors on that. That's polyester. Yeah. Um, but it was quite funny. I, I was telling Christine earlier that when I put it out there, sort of like um, before the series came out, I put a couple of promo sort of pictures out. And this mm -hmm. guy who works for my mate, uh, my mate is, uh, runs a, a company, office equipment company. And one of his managers wrote to me on Facebook going, oh, uh, what did he say? Like, oh, get a grip, mate. And I thought, oh, he's, he's trying to do it as the character, to the character. Right. He knows I'm an actor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and he went, I, I left it and I, I I left it. I thought, oh, he's just trying to be like, you know, someone speaking to the character. And then my mate wrote me and he said, oh, Steve, Steve's been in to the office. You're not going to believe this. He said, is Tim all right? I'm really worried about him. I think he's had a breakdown. <laughs> yes. And seriously, because I've, I've had depression myself and I was going to ask him if he wanted to go to the pub for a few pints uh, to have a chat about it. And my mate's looking at him going, Steve, he's, it's Tim, because he, he's changed his name. You know, he thought I changed my name to Peter Peter, and I'd had a breakdown. But it translated that well. Oh, and, my God. But he knew I was an actor. I, just, I don't get it. And I'm like, I said, but he knows I'm a – surely the first thought would be, it's a character. He's a character. Yeah. And he thought I changed my name and, I, and, I, and found some sort of religion. That's you know. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add this comment. I, I it was it, one of our teammates. One of our teammates wrote this, and uh, I can't identify who because if they write, if they, if one of our team writes this, then it comes out as the Legend of the Traveling Tars. Peter Peter looks like my maths teacher. It may be the same suit. There we are. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's it's deliberately. Yeah, it's a teacher look, isn't it? It is. So it's one of our teammates, look. and I have a nicer picture of Katie right there. There you ah. go. There you go. That's it. But I see what you mean by it's that that there's a modicum of authority or being official, but it can go to somebody's head. Okay, and it's yeah. like it, 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 settle, settle down. There. You're you're. It's not a lot of power, but my God, that power went. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's it's all about. It's not about the positive. Culture. It's about him. It's about him trying to teach people. So he's teaching because one of the one of the catchphrases is "Look it up, millennials." Yes. You know, we yes, I saw the picture where you have like the Chiron head and it's Yeah, yeah, looking up millennials. There's an advert actually we're gonna bring out with the look out millennials because that happens quite a lot. It's gonna come out and we'll probably do it towards the end of the week. Um as another promo. And um because you know what people have to go about millennials that don't you know saying they don't know anything, they don't know that this is so I'm, i I do that with a character. So anything I say, even Elvis, you know, everyone said of Elvis, but I say oh, look it up, millennials, look him up, Lee. So it's always sort of carrying that to the the next sort of degree. So that's one of the yeah. So I don't know. I think some millennials quite like it actually. But I don't. I well, don't. We've not really started really properly getting the advertising now. We're still waiting to get the big hits. But I don't know if you know Tim, but um, what to do, isn't it? How to get the how to get the views? Yeah. yeah. Get the publicity because it, unless you've got a name attached, you know. Oh, well, yes. 
Mish. We'll definitely help it out there. I want I want to get you to a hundred at least, if not more. I want to get you to a billion, but I want to like well, then if you get a billion, I'll get a billion. That'd be great, wouldn't it? I want to at least get you to the to the goal. We'll, we'll, we'll we've got we've got quite a few. I think there's about eight hundred people to see the first episode now, but we want you know it should be in the thousands really. We should be, but it's it's still early because they've only just been released. So yeah, yeah. And we're going to get the subscribers. Of, yeah, it's a matter of getting it sort of. The word okay. a couple weird. more people just subscribed. I just did a oh, well, there we are. look at that. That's great. But, uh, I don't even know if you noticed. I had to do this quick and I forgot how to do it, but um, I had to change your moniker. If you notice, that it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I noticed that at one point, but I couldn't remember if you could change that or I if can he change had to go back. I okay, can change good. It. You that, did you when we went, went in the middle of it? Yeah, I w because if you if if you notice when the screen shrinks. It removes it removes the monikers until it expands to this big, and then I can just go back in and oh, uh, there we go. Back. So as soon as I was trying to figure out way, and then once the yeah. screen ex uh, expanded or reduced, so I went in there and changed it out to Peter Peter. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, I forgot to change that. So oh, yeah, well, like, that, well, that's not... streaming right now. I'm so I'm so really grateful though to uh, for you giving the opportunity. Peter, to come on to the show. It's a really, really, really grateful. It's such a nice thing to do because, uh, you know. Um, and plus, I mean, I mean, you you did, the great thing is that you did start off having a little bit more of a Doctor who -y kind of feel to it so that our audience mm -hmm. said if they are more, I mean, we're a Doctor Who radio That was Tim's show. idea. And that, that, yeah. was, that was brilliant. And then being able just to kind of just flesh it out and really just show the Peter Peter character. I guess it's difficult because he's not instantly a likable character. That's the problem. He's. It's only, you, you sort of feel sorry for him. This is the thing. You, you kind of. The way it works is as you go through the story and you realize how desperate he is and how basically ill. <laughs> I was just thinking. I could see Peter Peter in his own sitcom, kind of like Toast to London type of deal. There we are. Yeah, well, I could see yeah. that happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be great. I mean, that would be the idea. Yeah, that would be lovely. He he would be like a. Uh, when, when they do the morning news and then it's like, and now for more of your chakras to get in line, go to yeah. here comes Peter Peter. And he's just like a three minute segment on a news channel. Exactly, Yeah. But it's, it's just getting it, it's getting it out there, getting it seen and getting the right people to see it really. So um, yeah. everybody on here, spread the word. Um, there's still quite a few people left. So spread the word out there. Get the, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. I realized quite a lot of it is very British. I mean, I know obviously you're very old okay with British humor and stuff, but I realized, as I was saying some stuff, I was like, "Oh shit, that, that's that's quite that's pretty sort of niche." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Some it's, of the some of the um, terminology was a bit. I think. It's really a, a. I tell I tell people when they ask me for my you know well, you know what's your favorite sitcom? I said I'm a creature of PBS, and they go, "What's your favorite sitcom, Red Dwarf?" <laughs> so oh, yeah. Everybody tell me Friends or something yeah. here in the states, and then I go, and then they go, "What is your favorite Red Dwarf?" And they go like. What's that? I'm just like exactly. probably one of the best sci-fi comedies out there. <laughs> no, I've, you know, I've never seen it. Seriously? Oh, you don't know what you're missing. It's one of those things I've never seen. But then I've I've only started watching Friends this year. Okay. Friends, because I was so uh, you know, as a sort of I don't know what I thought it was at the time, but yeah, my it was on it's on Netflix, and I went. Yeah. Someone said that it's one of the best sitcoms ever because it's a joke every other every other line. So I've watched it. I'm addicted. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's but the thing is, it, there's so much now. There's so much content. Yeah. I mean, I, I really one of the things I really wanted to geek out with was Supernatural. I have not seen one episode. No. I just that's a long running it. show, dude. Yeah, that's the problem, and it's the same thing that's with Doctor Who. It's when people episode. ask me, it's like Christian, where do I start? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I well, I told them with the with the Christopher Eccleston reboot because that would right. be the safe assumption. That's where everybody started when it came back. Yeah. But people are going like, should I go to black and white? And said, no. <laughs> well, the thing is right now, there's not a lot of new it. content coming out. So all of your new content is going to be on YouTube. It's going to be either on Facebook watching that kind yeah. of thing. So I have a lot of people watching, going crazy on YouTube to get their newer content. But you're getting a lot of people going back and binge watching. Okay, well, this is the first time I'm going to go ahead and back and watch this. First one. I decided I wanted to watch 30 Rock again. And I just decided to go through and I binged watch 30 yeah. Rock all over again. Okay. And so I'll probably do something else later. Yeah, so I've always seen Friends here and there. I've never even I've never personally watched Friends all the way through. I did I did Sopranos for the about the eighteenth time. I did all that. <laughs> yeah. 
that's uh, yeah. That's, that's, no, you've never seen it. No, no, no. I, I've, seen it. I've, seen it, yeah. I've seen. I've already seen the whole time all the way through, and then I, I have a tendency of wanting to watch certain ones here and there, like when when it's Christopher and Polly out in the middle of nowhere, and you. Oh, know, yeah. I love that episode so much. The Pine Barrens, that's called. Yeah. Yes, the Pine I'm, Barrens in Jersey. I, I'm still yeah. miffed about the ending. I'm one of those. That's yeah. just like. Uh, if anyone's seen it, they need to stop listening right now because. Yeah. 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 Okay, the creator finally said what that that what happened. He accidentally oh, slipped it out. He finally he? said it. Did he know? Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you want if, if everyone stopped yeah, listening yeah, and I can say it? I don't care. Just moment. They're, 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 they're here. They're here. Tony's they're gone. That was that was Tony being shot. The guy came out of the out of the bathroom. Yeah, was definitely because it goes back to and that's what I was thinking because it goes back to earlier that season or uh, wait no earlier on someone had said the uh, you know well I think it just nothing happens when, when they were right. going back and forth saying when we when, when you get off you know, it just nothing happens yeah but yeah Chase finally it was just finally Tony? Hits it. He, he slipped yeah. yeah that you know Tony was it just died Tony or did they get the whole family because that was I no. thought they took out the whole family no. No, because they said in there, and again, anyone that's listening has never seen The Sopranos, this is on you now if I'm going to give you yeah. a spoiler. I already gave you a warning. They said earlier in the show that no one's going to no one's going to kill the if, if the entire family's there, they're not going to oh. do a hit. No. That's why they kept filming it and showing that Meadow can't do a parallel park to save her damn life. Right. Because if Meadow parallel parked, got in and sat down, he would have been fine. Right. But uh, the guy went to the bathroom, and that was his direct shot. They opened the door, and you know, don't stop. Yeah. And he finally admitted it. It was right. just like a slip in an interview, and he was just okay. like, like that, I, I, think, I, think it was, I even think James Gandolfini was defending it. It was like, nobody understands it. It's like, James, you don't understand. Everybody was calling HBO thinking that their HBO went out for a good minute. That was serious. We left Everybody, up. My, me at the time was uh, my husband was my he was my fiance. We were over his family's house. No, we might have been married. That's correct. We were over his parents' house and everybody was watching it. And when that went off, we thought the cable went cable out. Went we were off. like, "What?" The, da, 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 da. Yeah, everybody caught. Uh, and I then realized. Okay, let me yeah. see if I can't find it. Like, yeah, yeah. I know you mean. Yeah. I bet you. I don't know though if it was still the Atardos mob. Or if it was the it was the other one. Anyway, that's that's looking more at detail, isn't it? But yeah. that's getting more details. Anyway. Listen, I, I really should go to bed. Go to bed. Yeah, will go to bed. One yeah, well, and I've got to go to my mum's in the morning. Let me to... let me put you back to where you were. <laughs> so you can think if, uh, if you want to look at the private chat, I put the link to where uh Chase yeah. had admitted it. It was on June eleventh where he he finally let it slip. All right, I'll look at that online then. Yeah, look, look at the story. Okay. Everybody, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Please oh, like Peter Peter. Said that. Huh? He's quite recently said that. Yes. Yes. Oh, it just oh, happened. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm gonna read it. I'll read that tomorrow then. Fantastic. Yeah. That's good to know. But that. yeah, even if you want to just Google David Chase admits yeah. Tony dead, you'll find yeah. it. It's it's oh, June eleventh. Oh, well, oh wait, 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 wait! Just one second. I got to. I just got to get this clarification. Didn't they say they were going to have a Sopranos movie though? Weren't they in the works for that? They were talking about it about the young Tony. They were talking yeah. about having young Tony, but I don't know what. Yeah, young Tony. Because I mean, gonna find gonna be Out Tim. Tim, go to All bed. All right, Tim, go to bed. I got to go eat. Tim. You guys go rest. Thank you so All much. Right. Tim. We're going to keep Thank promoting, and everybody it. like it. Please thank subscribe. You, thank you so much again, everyone, for having him on, and thank you very much. And I hope he wasn't, you know, he wasn't too badly behaved. But anyway. no. yeah. All, All right, right. tell us. Right. Take care.